pretty big reveal and changes here for the new Xiaomi Su7. In fact, massive changes. But I don't personally care that much about the Su7. I'll talk about all the details in this video of that car, and I think some of them are, are pretty amazing changes. But to me, I'm not that interested in the car. What to me was really interesting and was revealed at this event is the new Chilin 2.0 battery. The energy density improvement is huge. And seeing as the Zika 7X and other cars use the Chilin battery, this means future cars running CHL's Chilin batteries could see a big increase in range. So this will have an effect potentially very soon on a lot of the cars in the industry, including those sold not just in China. If you'd like to book a paid consultation, uh, you can do so, and I'll put a link in the description below. If you want advice on what electric car to buy, solar systems, all that kind of stuff, you can do that. Xiaomi have made some changes to the Su7, which is one of the most popular electric sedans in China. And these changes are pretty, well, probably not a big deal, actually, if, you're, if you don't live in China, because no one else in the world can actually get these cars but Xiaomi have said that they will begin selling them, I think, by the end of this year to global markets. So what are these changes? Well, let's have a quick look. YouTube's new algorithm means that you're often not getting all of our videos in your feed. There's 7,500. I'm pretty sure you're probably not seeing a lot of them. In the description, there is a link to our newsletter. Click on that and you can get an update every day of all the latest news in the electric car industry. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to have you with us. Xiaomi Su7, first facelift. Um, why are Xiaomi doing this facelift? Well, because this is what you do in China. You have to do this. Are they still selling them? They are selling very, very well, actually. Now, um, LiDAR and an 800-volt platform are standard. They didn't used to be. Xiaomi has officially unveiled the updated version, and apparently there's a price increase of 2,900 US dollars. So interesting to see Xiaomi put the prices up. Now, I should point out as well, Xiaomi does make their cars a little, little bit similar to Tesla. They looked at what Tesla did and they decided they got to do something different. Otherwise, they couldn't make money. They basically said they couldn't make money manufacturing cars in the old traditional way that Toyota and you know General Motors and everyone else does it. So they use gigacasting and a structural battery pack, very, very similar to Tesla. So they can make cars extremely quickly as a result. Apparently, there's new aerodynamics to improve the drag coefficient to 0.21, which is extremely efficient if it can really do that. There's also an 800-volt high-voltage platform, which replaces the previous 400-volt architecture. This will boost energy conversion efficiency, shall we say, by about 15% and enable charging of, of approximately 500 kilowatt. That means it can charge from 10 to 80% in 11.3 minutes, adding 525 kilometers of range. So that's impressive. For me though, the, the, the cooler thing is probably the actual increase in range. But first of all, it's also getting power, more of it, as if it needed that anyway. Apparently the, the base model now has 300 horsepower, which is more than what it previously had. So the Su7 Ultra, the super powerful model, no, I don't believe there's any changes to that yet. The battery system also uh, features a second generation CATL chilling battery with an increased energy density of 189 watt hours per kilogram at the pack level, up from 152 watt hours per kilogram. That is an enormous difference. That means this new battery pack is 24% more energy dense. And that's at the pack level, 24%. I mean, guys, that's actually a really big difference. So yeah, range as a result has increased substantially. Range is now, well, they haven't said exactly, but it's, they say beyond 820 kilometers. Of course, that's CLTC. So probably around 700 kilometers WLTP. The Su7 also gets standard roof-mounted LiDAR and an NVIDIA Thor U chip, providing the hardware foundation for advanced urban navigate on autopilot or NOA 
capability. So that's one of the big changes here. The chip has been improved significantly. So it's essentially NVIDIA's full self-driving chip. I mean, can it do full self-driving? No, not yet, but the, the ideas are, will eventually be able to. The cockpit, it also sees a second generation chip. So the actual soft software in the car gets a new chip with 50% more computing power, optimizing UI interaction, multi-screen linkage, and the hyper operating system ecosystem connectivity as well. Drivers get a standard heads up display and also a 10 inch screen right in front of the driver. All the trims, even the base model, right, gets ventilation, heating, and massage functions. And there's a bunch of other things that they get standard that you don't get in Teslas, which are similar prices. So the Xiaomi Su7, the reason it sells so well is well, what I just said. It's actually a really good car, and you get a lot more standard features than you do in a Tesla, which is um, amazing that Tesla can sell so many cars considering competition like this. Inside the cabin will gain magnetic attachment points and quarter inch threaded interfaces with that support a power supply offering greater customization and utility. There's a new car fragrance system, um, three replaceable sense, voice controlled switching link to the cabin air conditioning. There's a closed dual chamber air suspension system which gets a five level height adjustment capability up from the current four levels. So it looks like the air suspension has the ability to go even higher than what did previously. So yeah, pretty pretty impressive changes here. Now, pre-sale apparently is $32,800. And we now know some more information. Range is 902 kilometers, right? That's, that's a lot. So the standard model is 32,800. So the price therefore has gone up by 2,000. The mid-spec pro model is 37,100. So the price for that model has gone up 2,000. And the max model is 44,000. Price of that model has gone up by uh, one and a half thousand. Yeah, like you can see, the similar prices to the Tesla Model 3, which is pretty kind of crazy when you think about it. The computing speeds increased from 508 tops to 700 tops on all models. So that's, a, that's an improvement. There is now nine airbags instead of seven. Uh, the body strength has been improved, say so Xiaomi. There is an increase of power for all three models of 20 horsepower. Not a difference you're ever going to notice, but anyway, 20 horsepower more. The voltage actually is 752 volts, not 800 volts. But for the max model, model the 44,000 US dollar model, that has a voltage of 897. And you can add uh, 670 kilometers of range in 15 minutes. So yeah, charging is extremely fast. Now, speaking of range, the base model, 720 kilometers. The mid-spec gets 902 kilometers. And the max model, um, which is all-wheel drive, gets 835 kilometers. So adding that extra motor uh, reduces the range by about 67 kilometers. Well, not about, exactly 67 kilometers. In addition to that, the mid-spec model, the Pro, that also gets the dual chamber air suspension plus CDC, um, which previously it did not have. So for an extra 2000 US dollars, that mid-spec model is probably the pick of the bunch. It has the most range at 902 kilometers. It now has dual chamber air suspension plus CDC. So that's basically like ride control. Uh, yeah, really impressive car for the money. I mean, I don't know how they can do this and not lose a lot of money, and they don't. They don't lose money on these. They make... I, I'm not sure they're making a profit. I think they're about breaking even, which is remarkable. Now, guys, when you see these cars in person, I don't know if you've been to China and seen these vehicles in yourself, they are much smaller and more sleek than you would think. It kind of looks a bit more like a supercar than, um, than what the pictures sort of show. Uh, am I saying I love this car? No, I don't really. I don't know why it doesn't really appeal to me, but I do think it's impressive. And I also just wanted to point that out because, yeah, when you go to China and you see cars in person, it, it can be a little different. It can be a little different to what you would expect, but it's very, very sleek, very low car. Looks lower than a Tesla Model 3 and more sleek and sort of more, uh, more squashed down than a Model 3, which is kind of cool in a way, I guess you could say. But certainly not, a, it's, I don't really see this as being a family car. It's more like, you know, a couple's car or a single person car. Now, one other feature is 
In addition to the um, cage style steel aluminum mixed body structure with a higher strength than the previous version, um, they now have an embedded anti-roll cage and a new dedicated backup power for door locks. So if something happens to the vehicle, uh, it loses power, uh, the door locks will still open because of a dedicated backup power. That's interesting. Guys, what do you think about this? I mean, I think this is, car is pretty impressive, but I've got to say, I don't actually know what the battery size is. But for me, the biggest news here is that energy density change with the battery because that'll apply to other cars with the same battery. Meaning what exactly? Well, here's, for me, this is the most important part of the video. Zika 7X uses the chill-in battery. There you go. What else uses the chill-in battery? Well, actually, it's not really a battery. It's more of an architecture uh, the battery cells inside of the chilling battery are called something else. Uh, but it sounds to me as though the entire thing, the chilling battery, this, as in the actual system, and also the cells inside of it, the energy density of those battery cells sounds like it's improved. I mean, you're not going to get a 24% increase in energy density just by changing the shape of the pack, are you? That's just preposterous. So clearly, that will come to other cars. The Chilin 2.0 battery will come to various models that won't just be sold as China specials like Xiaomi is at the moment. So to me, that's that's really fascinating, really interesting to see this energy density increase. I'm going to try and work out exactly what this means, the ramifications for this. I'll put a video out showing how this will affect other models, other cars, and the rest of the industry. To try And also try and find out exactly what this energy, energy density is at the cell level, not just at the pack level. For me, that's the part that I talk about the most, cell level energy density. Although I guess pack level is probably really more relevant, we just don't usually use that terminology. Thanks for watching. Guys, if you want to install solar panels, a home battery or a home charger, the best way to do this for your situation is to go to the links in the description below and they'll take you to a page where you can compare everyone. So depending on where you, it doesn't matter where you live, a lot of people email me all the time saying, well, what solar system should I get? Who should I go with? What battery should I get? What electric charger should I get? Well, click in the links in the description and you can actually compare all the different choices and find the best deal for you. I'll put that link in the description below. Additionally, there is a battery savings calculator link and also a federal battery rebate calculator. I personally have found that I'm not paying for electricity at all, and that's including charging my two electric cars and also running my home power, my home sauna, um, nothing, not paying anything at all. And I think a lot of people are getting misled. They think that getting a battery is not worth it. Actually, I think it is worth it. So those links are in the description below.